when I went through the fraternity, I was 16 years old and uh, the youngest one in the fraternity. And now at 88, I'm the oldest one in a chapter. So it just turned around. In this exclusive interview for oracleonline.org, Brother Melvin B. Settles discusses his childhood in St. Louis, Missouri, graduating high school early and crossing the fraternity at age 16, his time in the military, 70 years of service in Omega, and the circumstances that led him to joining the Delta Iota Iota chapter in Stockton, California. I'm Melvin B. Settles, and I grew up in St. Louis, Missouri. I uh, attended college at Stowe Teachers College in St. Louis, and at that time, all of the schools were segregated. And uh, we had a chapter that came from uh, Lincoln University in Jefferson City, and they started the chapter in St. Louis at Stowe Teachers College, and that was uh, Omicron Sigma. In May of uh, 1948, I went to Vashon High School, and uh, a lot of the fellows who were ahead of me in, in high school, and they were going to Stowe Teachers College, they were my friends. And uh, so by being athletes like that, I decided that that was the best way to go. And after I listened to some of the other stories about some of the other fraternities, how they were, I figured Omega was the best one for me to attend. At the time, we were kind of new we helped around the campus, and it was sort of like a, a second home to us uh, because we, like I said, we could only go to that one college in St. Louis because of the segregation. So we just uh, did all of our work around the campus and helped out with the neighborhood as we could. At the time, we didn't have too many members of the graduate chapter. Uh, we had a couple of the teachers some of them would have uh, projects at their house that we'd have to go out, help with the gardens, help with pouring cement, or just any type of help that they needed, we would do it. Some of the things we did, uh, it was just to help out members of the community if they needed some help. As I say, it was all segregated, and uh, we, just, we were out there on our own, and we just helped in the community. Anytime someone needed some assistance, in moving or anything like that, we were there to help. In fact, we uh, did some of the recruiting, you know, we, because we picked out the ones that we wanted to join the fraternity. So and we, we looked for people who were interested in going to school, who had ideas of a future, what they wanted to do in the future. So we uh, primarily based most of it on scholarship and then on their activities as humans. We wanted to have the real men in the fraternity. I was the only black in the optical field for quite a while. I was stationed in San Antonio, Texas, and I heard of an optical school in St. Louis. And uh, so I went to the headquarters and told them I'd like to attend a school. And uh, they gave me all of the paperwork to fill out. And I was assigned to it because St. Louis was my home and the school was going to be six months, so I figured if I could at least spend six months at home and get away from San Antonio, Texas, which was really segregated at that time, that I, I would be better off. So I was accepted into the school, and uh, I really enjoyed it. Okay. Oh, you came back to be with me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, go ahead and let us know about how you met the lovely we Mrs. Settles. It's a, it's, a, it's a funny thing. Uh, when she came to St. Louis from Mississippi, I was in high school. I was a, a year older than her. She lived at 3407. I lived at 3408 right across the street. So we kept an eye on each other. Wow, all of those <laughs> years. So how long have you guys been married? It will be 68 years in December. I think because of the, uh, the problems that they have now in the desegregated schools, we didn't have those problems because all of our teachers knew our parents. Most of them lived in the same neighborhood and uh, we couldn't get away with anything. So we had to straighten up and fly right because the teachers would call our parents 
and we'd have trouble waiting on us when we got home if we got into trouble at school. Accountability was a big factor, I think. And uh, it, it just happened that uh, when I was in the seventh grade, I had a study period in a math class with eighth graders, and my brother was in that class. And the teacher used to ask questions and none of them could answer it. And I raised my hand and the teacher said, would well, you want to go to the bathroom? I said, no, I know the answer. And I answered the question. And that happened three or four times. And she went to the principal and said, I want to put him in the eighth grade because he knows as much math as my eighth graders. So I graduated earlier. Uh, I was 12 years old when I graduated from the eighth grade and uh, caught up with my brother. Uh, okay. Yeah. So how many brothers and sisters? Uh, I just had the one brother, yeah. Okay, older or younger? Uh, he was a year and a half older. Oh, okay, a year and, and a half uh, older than you. We went to high school together and participated in track. I was too little to be trying to play football or basketball, but uh, we participated in track, ran track, went to summer school, and I graduated in three and a half years. And it's a funny thing I tell people that there's a saying that history repeats itself, and I say sometimes history reverses itself. Uh, when I went through the fraternity, I was 16 years old, and uh, the youngest one in the fraternity. And now at 88, I'm the oldest one in the chapter. So it just turned around. Yeah. Your transition from when you cross, cross as an undergraduate, then you... Uh, uh, you were in the military. Is that after you crossed, you joined the military, or what, how did that yeah. the timeline? Well, uh, after I, after two years, I was taking German in school, and I that was the main subject that I enjoyed. And uh, we were supposed to, uh, in order to have a class, we had to have ten people in it, and I could only get about four or five more to take the third year of German, and no one else wanted to do it. So it, since I couldn't have German in the class, I just decided, well, I'll go in the Army. And I went into the Army uh, at 18 years old. Wow, okay, okay. Now, how did you end up in California? Tell us about that and in the chapter that you're in now. How did yeah. all of that occur? Well, we, we were stationed in Germany, and... Uh, it was due to come back. We had an optical lab in uh, Tracy, California. We had one in Denver, Colorado. And I applied to go to Tracy, California because I had two kids who were about to graduate from high school. And I thought that California did the best as far as college for the youngsters. So I was accepted in the optical program at uh, Sharp Army Depot in Stockton, California. Well, I'm with Delta Iota Iota. They do a lot with the kids, uh, with the youngsters. They have a mentor program, and uh, it's very helpful for the youngsters now. When I got back to California, and I happened to uh, meet a person, and he had the uh, Q sign on his arm. And I said, oh, I think I know what that is. And I started talking to him, and we got together and uh, decided that they had a chapter here, so then I became very active again. Okay, so reclamation mm -hmm. is what brought right. you back, huh? Right. Once you have a friend, and I've, I've met people in the military, some in Alaska and Colorado, and once you become a friend like that, the association grows, and I think it's something that's very necessary for people to have, and uh, it, it, it really helps... Uh, when you move around as much as people are moving around today, if you have someone that can carry you forward, it goes just at the beginning of it, the friendship and the fraternity. We really need to have our youth coming up behind us uh, and just look forward to growing up and doing something that is really justified, uh, not just anything that comes along. A lot of young people coming up now, and I've met some through my years of teaching, who didn't have both parents at home, one parent was in jail, they ended up doing the same thing. 
but they really don't have to do that if they would just uh, look forward to uh, becoming the man that they want to be, not the man that they have to be through the life that they live. In order to become an Omega man, you would have to be that type of a man, and, uh, because otherwise you couldn't get through the fraternity. This has been a presentation of oracleonline.org.